Hi everybody, I'm back with more of my yoga story and we left off in 1993 approximately, but I wanted to talk to you a little more about lineage uh, because as I became more interested in yoga, um, I came in contact with people who had a lineage and who were a part of a great lineage that goes back for thousands of years. And it came to America, it touched America. So, as I had mentioned before in a previous video, I studied with Swami Divya Rupananda, and she was a woman who lived in New Mexico, um, and she worked as a waitress for a while, and also lived in Las Vegas, and she had an interest in yoga. I'm still in, by the way, I'm still in the Grand Canyon, <laughs> so it's kind of, it's evening time and it's um, the wind is picking up it's probably gonna have some maybe some rain I don't know but anyway so she um, took an interest in yoga and she studied with Indra Devi now Indra Devi was a very famous yoga teacher and she was actually Russian born and she had a, a spark of interest in spirituality and um, yoga from a very young age. And she had an opportunity to go to India and she studied with Krishna Macharya who worked at the Mysore Palace. And Krishna Macharya is a very famous yoga teacher who brought it into the modern world and he had never taught a woman and she had to really really push her case to have him take her as a student and she studied in India with him uh, alongside Bik BKS Iyengar and Sri K. Patabi Joyce and those two people are very famous yoga teachers who also brought yoga to the United States and also to all over the world really just modernized it and popularized it so she studied alongside them and when she came back to America she went to Hollywood and she taught many of the movie stars and she wrote several books and so that is who my teach my I studied with Divya Rupananda she studied with Indra Devi so there's some a lineage connection right there now at some point Indra Devi told Swami Divya Rupananda, which that was not her name at the time, she just had a regular secular name, but she told her, okay now you have such a strong interest, it's time for you to go to Bihar, and that's a place in India. And what she meant is that there was the very famous Bihar school of yoga. and. Bihar School of Yoga, uh, the leader there it was Paramhamsa Satyananda Saraswati. And so Indra Devi took Swami Divya Rupananda, took her to India. And they traveled on a pl uh, train. And at the time, Bihar was a very dangerous place. It still is, from my knowledge, a dangerous place. But back then, I think it was 
very dangerous and like there was a lot of lawlessness and a lot of just crime and, and unchecked crime basically but these two women they got on the train and they were robbed on the train on the way up but they got there and she met Satyananda they met Satyananda Saraswati who is a very great great yogi of our time and she studied with him and she took formal initiation into the sannyas and sannyas means it's like a vow that you take uh, I don't know if there's celibacy involved there might be it's kind of like a monk for those of you who don't know and um, there might be celibacy or there might just be a vow of like being a practitioner taking you know that you're gonna continue this practice for the rest of your life but you wear orange robes and you just take you take the she took her Sanskrit name and you've made the connection with the guru you know and you've taken the instruction from the guru and the practices and so she did all that and she left with Indra Devi and she came back to the New Mexico area the and then um, that's where I, I met her in Las Vegas where I was living and I studied with her Swami Divya Rupananda and that was after I studied with the gal from New Jersey. Okay, the gal from New Jersey was a student of Swami Divya Rupananda. So both of us were students of her. And yeah, I would go. She had a little place that she rented in Las Vegas. And it was like ten dollars a class and she too would do a very long yoga nidra at the end of class very relaxing um, yeah that was good she did pass away I, I didn't study with her that long and I lost track of her and touch with her but I heard later that she passed away and when she passed away they made sure that they buried her in her orange robes so I found that very touching but there's some lineage right there but it that was only the tip of the iceberg for me it was only the beginning it was just like a it was like a precursor it was like a it was just like a slight hint of the things that were going to happen in my life and it was a very good beginning I have some notes here just so that because some of these dates you know I, I think are kind of important to know like Swami Indra Devi or Indra Devi she lived in from 1899 to 2002 and then we're going to move on to Krishna Macharya who I spoke of and he lived from 1888 to 1989. So he lived to be 100 years old. And he taught the king of Mysore. And he taught at the Mysore Palace. And he, see, in India, and I believe this is the case today, you know, India, yoga and the practice of asana, pranayama, all of it there's much more to the to the tradition but all of it is well integrated into the culture into the society into the lifestyle so that king naturally would want to have his own yoga teacher in-house you know it's kind of like your own in-house doctor or your own in-house holistic healer or doctor or you know and that's what Krishna Macharya was in charge of. He was he was there to keep this king healthy and his court healthy and 
and hold classes there and teach people. So he was there. He taught many, many things across the board as far as yoga. And um, he taught his nephew, who was BKS Iyengar. And Iyengar is a very, very famous yoga teacher who also brought yoga to the Western world. Now, Iyengar started studying with him at a very young age, and he had a lot of health problems as a child, and he was there with his uncle to um, sort of work with the health problems through yoga, and he, was, he did a lot of asana practice with his uncle, and he was he was very good at what he did. And so one of the traditions of India is to, at that time, was to go around towns, different towns and places, and demonstrate the great health benefits of yoga, and demonstrate the asanas, and talk about it, and, and show it to people, show it to the local community. And this is what they did. Krishnamacharya would go around and he would talk and his nephew, young BKS Iyengar, would demonstrate the postures and move and, and they, would, they would showcase yoga. Also, because BK, BKS Iyengar was limited a little bit maybe, or actually he was, when he started to teach, he also worked with people who had limitations he started to use props. He used he used different kinds of things to, you know, pull your body. He would use ropes and blocks to elevate certain parts of your body and to lean on things and, you know, sandbags to weigh things down so that you could sort of assist your body in these certain positions. So he really did become famous for the use of props. Uh, but let's see, Krishnamacharya lived from 1888 to 1989. And um, Iyengar, I've got my notes here. Let me look. And I find it all quite interesting. He lived from 1918 to 2014, and he lived to be 95 years old. And then there was Sri K. Patabi Joyce, and I don't believe he was a relative of Krishnamacharya, but he was a student at the Mysore Palace, and Sri K. Patabi Joyce. Uh, is the founder of Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, which is a very famous style in the world. And, and from that, a more kind of watered down, I would say watered down version is called Power Yoga. So yeah, that, that's that. And so Patabi Joyce was also practicing there at the palace. And Krishnamacharya was very creative. He would work with each person in their own way. And so he worked with um, a group of young boys. They were like 13 years old, between, you know, 13 to 16. And he did kind of a gymnastic style. And, and that was sort of the beginnings of vinyasa yoga. Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga, that was what Patabi Joyce was doing, and they sort of developed this style. Now, I know that there's history, there's some, like, more historian, historians will have more information about that they may have drawn this style from ancient texts. Um, I don't know a lot about that, so I'm just giving you kind of a general, general idea of kind of where it came from, but... You know, it was a very creative environment and they worked with different people in different ways and worked with their bodies and asana and and these styles 
started to develop of how to work with people. And Pratabi Joyce lived from 1915 to 2009, and he was 93 years old when he passed away. So I personally never did study with BKS Iyengar, but I was very much influenced by him through his book, Light on Yoga. I, I really did study that book. I enjoyed it, and I was very influenced by it. I did study with several of Mr. Iyengar's students um, who were American teachers. And I'll, I'll go into another video on the different people I studied with. There's kind of a long list. Um, I did study with Sri K. Patabi Joyce and his grandson, Sharat Rangaswamy, in 2002 in New York City. And I was really happy to do that um, before he passed away. I knew it was really important to make that connection and, you know, study with him. Um, let's see. Now, Krishnamacharya, after he passed away, he, his son, TKV Desikachar, uh, his son sort of took over the lineage. He wrote a book called The Heart of Yoga, but he lived from 1938 to 2016, and uh, he, he died at, at the young age of 78, and he also wrote a lot of books and toured America quite a bit talking about yoga and teaching yoga and training people so that part of lineage you know continued so a lot of these you can see how each person had their own vein of teaching their own style and then also their own lineage and their own continuation and then sometimes the students who receive it they on their end you know, may alter it or teach it to a different, uh, different ear. You know, maybe they're teaching it to Americans or uh, Chinese people or Europeans. You know, there might be some shift at, when it comes to you're teaching someone different. Um, and then we go to. Satyananda Saraswati. Now he was the the great guru who was in Bihar, and his teacher was Shivananda. That's a very famous lineage, Shivananda Yoga. Shivananda was a great yogi, and he lived from 1887 to 1963. And his successor was Paramhansa Satyananda Saraswati and he lived from 1923 to 2009. And his successor is Paramhansa Naranjananda Saraswati, who is still alive and still um, teaching at the Bihar School of Yoga. And he's kind of around my age. Um, and my current teacher, Dharma Bodhi, uh, studied with Niranjananda and Satyananda Saraswati and was heavily influenced by them. So I'm connected that way through that lineage. So um, this is how the yoga tradition is brought down through time. It's a verbal lineage. It's a tactile limit lineage it's a person to person connection that you have it's an energy transmission it's a watch, watch and learn it's a look and see it's a it's a real live connection that you have with your teacher for time, for many you know many many hours many many days and it's like you take it in, you digest it, and you it becomes you. And this is how it's been done for thousands and thousands of years in the yoga tradition. 
and here we are it's coming into our modern world now there are problems with that with this tradition coming into our modern world and I'll probably do a whole video talking about that because there's enough to say about it I would say but nevertheless we are where we are and this beautiful tradition of liberation is brought to us and we have it and so what will we do with it that's the question what will we do with it in, in these modern times so I thank you for watching again please comment below if you have any questions or any subject matter that you'd like me to talk about I will do my best to talk about it and I hope to see you again real soon and have a great evening. Namaste.